Christian Communications Network from Belfast, Northern Ireland, welcomes you to today's programme. Here is Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. Well, I'm very excited about our guest today on Deciding Your Destiny, Pastor Tommy Barnett from Phoenix, Arizona. He's pastor of a church that has more than 20,000 members. He also is uh, the co-founder with his son, Matthew, of the LA Dream Center in Los Angeles, which reaches thousands of hurting, broken people every single day. And Tommy is going to talk about not only the work they're doing there, but how he has a heart to help us further establish and develop the Dream Center here in Belfast. Uh, we've already been reaching people by the hundred for a number of years in Belfast, but we're now uh, going to advance this much faster, accelerate it, and uh, with the help and support of Dream Center LA, we're confident that we will be going forward much more effectively in the future. So God bless you as you hear this inspiring program today. Well, Pastor Tommy Burnett, we're delighted to welcome you here to Deciding Your Destiny. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be in your great city. And You've been in Belfast before, but you've not had time to look around, I gather, as much as this time. <laughs> well, you know, I love big cities, and uh, this city is very, very special. Of course, it's been in the news all over the world. We've followed the activities in your city, but it's just wonderful to come and see firsthand what is happening. Unfortunately, in, in the news for the wrong reasons, <laughs> but it's changing for the better. Well, it's true, but you know, every city in, in, a, in the world has its problems. Yeah. The same kind of issues every city is dealing with around the world. That's right. Well, I'm uh, particularly excited that you're here with us, Pastor Tommy Burnett, because you, you founded the first original Dream Center in LA. Yes. And that know, was what, 20 years ago? Yes, exactly, 20 years ago. My goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, and the people you've been helping are broken, hurting people. Yes. You know, the way it happened was our church in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, recently a survey listed it as one of the five largest cities, uh, churches rather, in the nation. Mm -hmm. And God blessed our church. We became affluent and influential. Mm -hmm. And God spoke to me one day as, you know, God did not create the church to be a waiting room for saints. The church is a hospital for the hurting. And we realize that with great blessing comes great responsibility. So we decided that we were going to pick on something that was bigger than us, take on a big project, reach hurting people. And of course, one of the cities that is hurting most in our nation is Los Angeles. So we went to Los Angeles and I remember the day that we flew over in a jet helicopter and I looked down and over 25 million people in the Los Angeles area. And as I looked down, I thought, how could we ever make an impression on a city that big? We'd be kind of like a little ant among this huge metropolis. And uh, the Lord seemed to speak to me and say, well, you just make a difference in your world. You do the little that you can. Yes. And so we started with a little ghetto church, very small place, right in the heart of the city, and uh, just reached out to hurting people. I'd been offered to go to Orange County to a very influential area, and a very influential man said that he would support us if we went to that area. But God impressed upon me, no, I want you to go to the heart of the city, the hurting people. So that's how we got to LA. We realized that God raised us up that we could do something mm -hmm. to reach that city. Yes. But I mean, to see a life mm -hmm. transformed. Yes. Even one who has had no hope. Yes. Especially young people. And, and you do reach a lot of young people that are suffering from alcohol and drug abuse and that type of thing. Yeah. And some suicidal. But to see not not just one, but so many thousands over the, yes. over the last years. And how many do you actually, 
accommodate at the Dream Center in LA? Well, soon, right now we have about 800, but soon we'll have 1,200 people that live in this hospital, which is 16 stories high, 1,400 rooms in this place, uh, 400,000 square feet. And what it is, is a former hospital that we bought, a hospital now for the hurting. My son Matthew likes to call it a one-shop shopping center for the hurting. So we have everything there. We have a chiropractic center that is free of charge. We have a medical center there. We have uh, 270 some odd ministries that go out of it. Right. And uh, Dr. Stewart, the way it worked out is that we built this place on finding need and filling it. Find a hurt and healing it. So every time we find a need, we just kind of jump up and rejoice because it's an opportunity to do something for God and an opportunity to be blessed. Someone said to me, Pastor, you sure are a compassionate person to reach out to hurting people like this. But I said, no, in a sense, I'm kind of selfish because when you give to the poor, you lend to God. And He always repays. So when we went to LA, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to reach the city. We had not been trained in cross-culture evangelism at all. We had been trained as pastors. So the way it worked out is one day I got on television, just like we're on television. And really, I believe this is a very important program to this nation and to the world that we're talking about. Yes. So I didn't know how to reach the lost. I didn't know how to reach the inner city. I'd never been trained. And I stood up and said, if anybody knows how to reach the hurting people, would you come to us? And a man came to me the next week. And he said, for eight and a half years, I've been going down the streets and I've been finding young people who come to LA, they want to be in show business. They run out of money in about two weeks and then they end up on the street. Some of them are little girls that have no place to go. So the pimps find them and say, we'll take care of you. And they end up in prostitution. So what did we do? We started a ministry for human trafficking. And today we have 75 girls that we've rescued from human trafficking up on the street. And the way we did it uh, is that we go out every Friday night, 60 people from the Dream Center. That's what we call our place. And we take with us nothing but an armful of red roses. And we find these little girls on the street and they've been there two or three in the morning 14, 15, 16 years of age, used by evil men to raise money. And we give them a rose and we say to them, you're as beautiful as this rose. And this rose represents the rose of Sharon, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we tell them the old story of how Christ died for their sins and how he can change their lives. And these little girls light up and we say, would you like to accept Christ? And they say, yes. And we pray with them the sinner's prayer, God, forgive me of my sins. And they accept Christ. And then we say to them, would you like to get away from this life? Would you like to get away from this pimp? And they say, oh, yes. And we say, there's a place that we can take you. And we will feed you and clothe you and house you and give you job training and get you on your feet and protect you from your pimp. And you can stay at least a year or longer. Would you like to go? And they say, yeah. Amazing. And then we say, well, come on, let's go right now. And then fear comes into their face. And they snap to reality and say, we can't do this. Our pimp will kill us if we do that. He's over there. He'll kill you too. And we say, but if you mean business, if you'll stand on this corner, we'll be back in 15 minutes with our van and we'll slow down and open the door, if you'll just jump in, we'll rescue you. Mm -hmm. So 15 minutes later, we come back, we slow down, we slide the door open, she jumps in, the pimp sees it and he jumps in his car and the race is on to the Dream Center. But what that pimp doesn't know is we call ahead to the Dream Center and we've got about 200 men 
in our discipleship program that are just barely out of prison and barely saved. <laughs> and when we show up at the Dream Center, these 200 men are standing in front of the Dream Center with their tattoos gleaming in the sunlight. And we never see that pimp again. They run away. They're protected. And so today we have one whole floor. When you get to that floor and walk out of the elevator, there is security there because these pimps will try to come and get them because many of these girls will testify against them in court. Mm -hmm. Also, they'll try to get them back because that's their meal ticket. Yes. So we have to protect them, feed them, clothe them, medical attention, psychological help, because mm -hmm. the girls are diseased and their minds are destroyed. But a year later, you would know these girls. Many of them now are leaders in the Dream Center by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have everything at the Dream Center. We have prostitutes, former pimps that have been saved, gang members, drug addicts, and I often joke and say, that's just the pastoral staff. <laughs> <laughs> but now these people are leaders at the Dream Center, transformed by the power of God. Dr. Stewart, your city yes, has the same kind of people. Same kind of thing. I've walked the streets of your city already. Yes. This morning, I looked out of Starbucks and I watched them walk the streets. You have the same thing from drugs and violence and gangs that we have right here. Matter of fact, Belfast is one of the neediest cities in the entire world. And when you came to me a few years ago mm -hmm. and you said, Pastor, would you help us? We want to do that in our city. And you shared your heart with me. I said, yes. A lot of people do not know, but you knew a principle. And you said, let me sow into your ministry. And you sowed into the Dream Center to help us finish a floor yes. for these people in L.A. that needed God. Yes. And now that principle comes back when you sow into someone else's ministry. Then blessings come back to you. And that's why I'm in Belfast here. I want to help you do what you're already doing to continue to expand it for the glory of God. Well, we really, really deeply appreciate your heart for to help us here. Yes. And we have actually, since we first met a few years ago, yes. uh, we immediately on return, we went to LA two or three times and we saw your people and Evelyn and I were there, and some others followed us later. Well, matter of fact, we ask you to be on our board, right. and you are on our board there, along with Michael Jordan's mother and yeah. the very people that really want to reach the nation. For That's God. right, and, and we were, we were challenged, but we were overwhelmed with gratitude to see those people, yeah. and we walked through the middle of that crowd of people and heard their story in brief. They used to be in prostitution. They used to be on drugs. And now to see the transformation. So when we returned home, we immediately called some leaders we knew together and some volunteers. And we shared the vision right here uh, of the Dream Center and said, we want to start training people. And uh, for about two, three years, we've been reaching onto the streets of Belfast. Praise God. And hundreds of kids have been reached uh, for example, in one of the parks, there's about five, six hundred gathered there on a Saturday. And these kids are suffering much the same as you described. Yeah. Broken lives, teenagers, on drugs, they've been in violence, they've been suicidal, they've been depressed, they've been suffering loss, and they've no understanding of God or church. They're completely disconnected. But uh, many of them have come to a place of being freed from the bondage of alcohol abuse, drug abuse, just through the team loving them and sharing the love of God, but also a number have come to salvation. But we're only scratching the surface. Mm. So we do need additional help to really accelerate this whole vision of the Dream Center. And we are looking for a building, have been for some time. Uh, we're looking for people who'd pray for us and people who would actually financially support it here. Uh, so we can see a, a center much smaller, of course, than L.A.,
but nevertheless, there's a need in this city. You know, I don't know of a city in the world that is in greater need of a dream center. Yes. And a vibrant dream center. And, you know, we have to start from where we're at. Yeah. And most people just never start. And Dr. Spirit, there are very few people that re really catch the burden like you do. Some people think it's the greatest thing in the world of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. There are other people who will say, well, that's not important. Those people are drain on society. Yes. Our tax money go there. Yeah. They're part of the problem and they despise them. There are other people that say, these people can be productive people. Mm -hmm. The answer is not the government. The answer is Jesus Christ. Our relationship with him. Our relationship with him and to take the gospel that will literally change their life. In our city, the Dream Center, crime in LA has gone up in every district except our district. And crime has gone down. Mm -hmm. It's the only district and they attribute it now to the Dream City. The influence of that That's ministry. Right. That's yeah. literally changed the city. Yes. And the Dream Center has literally become the darling of our city. When the Katrina hit, you might remember that terrible hurricane that hit our area. We bust 300 families out to the Dream Center to live for one year. And people like Magic Johnson, the great basketball star, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I could go on and on. They all came, congressmen and senators. And they said, the Dream Center has literally been the hope of our city. And they've literally made Matthew the pastor of LA now because we started downtown with people that nobody else wanted and God used it. But Dr. Stewart, it cannot be done without partners. That's right. Without people that are willing to step out and come across. When we started, we started with a little ghetto church. Yes. They could hardly find us. And like you, we kept looking for a building and looking for a building. You see, we would never find it. I wanted a destination point where people could come, you know, like downtown or someplace. Mm -hmm. And finally, this hospital opened up to us. I believe there's a building out there. You know, there might be someone watching this program and say, mm -hmm. you know, I got a building. Yeah. A building could be donated or a building that could be sold. That would yes. be just the spot. Yeah. You got to have partners. If I didn't have a partner like you, if I didn't have partners like different ones, Joyce Meyer has been a partner of our, T.D. Jakes, who both of these people, I'm their pastors, you know, mm -hmm. have responded, Jensen Franklin, another outstanding minister. They all said, Pastor, we can't do it, but we want to join with somebody that has the burden for it that is willing to give his life to it. And for the last 20 years, I've gone all over the country speaking, not taking a penny myself, but yeah. everything that came yeah. for our speaking went right to the Dream Center. And I'm just saying today, there are so many things people can do. First of all, they can pray for this ministry. And you, I really be when people pray for a ministry like this, then they want to they wanna give to it. Yeah. And we need partners. One person can't do it. Yeah. You know, my church, uh, we give $3 million a year to world missions. Well, the largest world missions giving church in America. But when I started the Dream Center, I thought, well, I'll take some of that money and I will use it at this home engines project. But God spoke to me and said, no, I want your church to give to other projects. I don't want you to give a penny from your church. I want to be your source. I want other people to take ownership of that. And I want to do something through people mm -hmm. because what I'm going to do is bigger than your church. Yeah. And God sent people from all over the country. Mm -hmm. So we need people to pray. We need people to give. And we need volunteers. Volunteers. And I know there are thousands watching this program. And Dr. Stewart, wouldn't it be wonderful if they could call in and I hope that we'll give them a number they can call yes. and join you on those teams to absolutely, go out and absolutely. rescue the people and the, witness. And, the need is overwhelming. Mm. And I gave some statistics before we started this program. 
about the increase in people suffering with depression, with yeah. suicidal tendencies, poverty, hundreds of thousands of young kids in poverty in Belfast. And, uh, and so we, we have seen lives change. For example, one young girl, she met with our team at the City Hall in Belfast. Yeah. She was always drunk. She came a number of times. She had no purpose for a future. And they asked her, what would you like to do when you become 21? She said, I am going to commit suicide because I have no future, I have no job. I'm drunk all the time. My family's thrown me out of my house. But over a period of weeks and months, the Dream Center team, as we call them, they got to know her, let her know that they cared, and she developed a relationship. Today, she stopped drinking and drugs. She's in a stable job, and she's a changed person. That's only one, there's many others. Some of her team have gone to court with others who were facing charges of crime because of things they did in the city. And, and the, the strength of somebody going to help them because they had no father. That's right. And uh, so we have a heart for hurting broken people and the, the need is overwhelming, but we do need, as you say, more support. And uh, one of the things that did impress me, first when I met yourself a few years ago and also when I went to LA, was the, the integrity that I felt in my spirit. And uh, not only that, but the people I talked to. Uh, it was a God-honoring operation. It was done for His glory. It was done in a proper professional manner, business-like manner. But it was done most of all with the love of God. And it was built on relationships. You know, Dr. Stern, I know in, in your life, you literally have built your life on helping elderly people finding a hurt and healing them. And I thought to myself, and I said to my wife, be very easy for you at your age and my age, that we'd sit back and say, let's really enjoy life. But you know, there's something that God puts in people like you and myself, that we want to make a difference in the world. And you never get too old to make a difference. We want to empower other people. Yeah. And, and that's what it's about, the hope of the future and this and future generations is that we can somehow transfer that mantle or impart that passion yeah. to younger people who realize there's something bigger than us and we need to get a vision for helping others. And when we do, then we're blessed of God because the heart of God is to help the hurting, isn't it? It really is. There's nothing closer to the heart of God. I think of the major denominations in my country and yours. They literally started with the poor. And they grew and they had revival. And if you'll study history, every time they turned just to the affluent and forgot the poor, the demise yeah. of that denomination. Become self-centered. Yes. yes. And Jesus, he loved the poor. He reached out to the hurting. And uh, nobody has a right to live in self-pity when there's so much hurt in the world today. And, you know, I want to talk to people here today who literally, if I may look at the camera sure, and simply say, if you are depressed, if you have a need, if you feel hopeless and lifeless and you have no dream, the answer to your need is find some hurt. Get involved with this man. Go out and find somebody that is in need and your life can be changed by the power of God. And I'm getting so excited. When you said, Pastor, first time I met you, would you help us? I, I, I sat in morning, this morning Starbucks and looked out the window at the people went by. Mm. And uh, God just gave me a great burden for Belfast. Wonderful. And I really believe that God's going to open up doors today. And I, I just pray the Lord, help somebody. You know, I often preach that when I go to a city, I ask God to just give me one person. One person that caught the burden. One person that would touch the believing button. And I believe that there is a miracle in this audience today. Yes. Of somebody listening. And wouldn't it be great because of this broadcast that people would join themselves with Dr. Stewart in whatever way they could be a blessing. Prayer, giving, and all the things that we need prayer to see the work of God go forward. 
Dr. Stewart, I, I remember when we first went to the Dream Center. We begin to ask people, come and help us. We don't know how to reach the inner city. If you know how to do it, please come to us. And there was one man who came to us and said, Pastor, for eight years now, I've been going down the street and I've been finding people that are in need. And he said, I met a young girl who came to the city. She wanted to be in the movies. Two weeks later, she lost all of her money. She'd spent it all. She met a handsome young man on the street who said, look, if you'll just come with me, I'll take care of you. Well, a few weeks later, she found herself working the streets as a prostitute for this man. A few months later, she found herself pregnant with a child. She had the baby. After just a few weeks, the man said to her, now you gotta get back on the street. But she didn't wanna get back on the street. She loved that little baby so very, very much. It's the only thing that she ever possessed that was really hers. So she tried to get back on the street, but she'd always come home with the baby. And the pimp said to her, look, if you don't get out there and make me money, I'm gonna kill this baby. She didn't believe that that was even possible. She tried again and again, but always her heart would take her back to this little baby. One day he took a gun, put it to the head of this little baby, pulled the trigger and took its life. And with a curling iron, he burned her in a manner that she could never have children. When we found her on the street, she was skin and bones initiated You've never seen such a pitiful little girl. We brought her to the Dream Center. We begin to love her. We begin to care for her. We begin to tell her that she was somebody special. She came to service and accepted Christ as her personal savior. Today, she is the leader of the teen discipleship group. Young girls who are cutters, who cut their wrists. The kind of kids that blow up a hospital or a school that they live in. Today she's a productive citizen that God is using a leader at the Dream Center. Mm-hmm. So you see, it's possible to reach people that literally have no hope. This girl would have been dead today yes. if it had not been for teams like yours yes. that find girls just like that right. in this city that are hurting and need God. Mm-hmm. And oh, The need is so great. The opportunity is so great. The reward is so great. You know, I pastor a church of uh, over 20,000 people in my church in Phoenix. But let me tell you, the greatest joy I have is the Dream Center in Los Angeles. Those 800 people living there that have been redeemed by the power of God. Drugs, alcohol, gangs. Amazing. And... Dr. Stewart, I can't believe that you're able to do so much with not even a a great facility that you have by just rallying people. And and that's the kind of ministry God blesses. You do with what you have to do. Think what it's going to be like when you get that facility. We do what we can with what we've got at the moment. Isn't that right? Yes. And that's why God is opening up doors for you. And that's why the future is so great. Because there's those little girls out there, they'll never be reached unless people join with you Mm -hmm. and help you. And I believe they're going to do it. I believe they are doing it. And and isn't the key for all of those people that are going to be volunteers and are at the moment volunteers to be motivated by the love of God? Oh. and, And people sense that love of God through them. Isn't that right? Well, you hit on a great point there. What a great question. You know, A lot of people will say, oh, I want to help and come with Dr. Stewart or with Tommy Barnett. And I've got a burden for these people. But after a while, they work with these people. And to have one put a gun to your head, like they did my son, Matthew. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm dying with AIDS. And he said, I'm going to kill you. And then I'm going to kill myself and make a statement where the world will realize There are people that need help that are dying with AIDS. Well, it's a long story, but after a few weeks, God got a hold of this man and he fell to his knees and accepted Christ as his personal savior. 
but they're out there. But about the time somebody puts a gun to your head or they curse you out or threaten to kill you or beat you up, the burden leaves. But what keeps you going is the call. The call. You see, a burden comes and goes. But the call of God will keep you going when you don't have a When it doesn't make any sense. When adversity comes. Yes. When people threaten your life or when you get discouraged and think, yes. well, I haven't found that building or yes. not everybody's cooperating with me. I need churches that will come alongside me. And if it's just a burden, well, you'll scrap it. But the call of God call keeps on calling. Will let you go. Won't let you go. And there are people out there that have the call, but they're just waiting for somebody that have the same life objective. Yes. And Dr. Sir, let me encourage you. There are people out there that have the same life objective, looking for somebody to get behind. And this is their moment right now. Amen. 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 That's so encouraging. Thank you very much. Pastor Tommy, you. and you have a sense in your heart that Belfast really needs a dream center. Oh, of any city in the world. And uh, I'm committed in my small way. You know, now that my son is helping me pastor our great church, I have time. I want to help you every way that we possibly can. We really are. Because this is a target point in the world. Because what happens here will make a difference in the world, literally. When your teams go to rescue these girls, yeah. do they actually get away without a scratch every time? Or how do they do that? Because these guys are violent, aren't they? Oh, they are violent. But that's kind of the, and it, to another two things we do. When we go out, we give them the, the roses and sometimes, and we give them a little card, slip it to them mm -hmm. and say, we know you may not be able now to come with us, but call us mm -hmm. and tell us where you're at any time of the day. Yes. And we will come to you and we will rescue you. Mm -hmm. Another group goes out at our church and the police help us. They tell us where these girls are. They tell us where the pimps are. And we take tubes of lipstick mm -hmm. and they like it. Mm -hmm. And we give them a tube of lipstick mm -hmm. and a little card that says, call us 24 hours a day Maybe you've been beaten up or maybe you're running for your life. Get to a phone, call us, and we'll be there. So we show up. So it's not always that moment we come any time during the day. That's amazing. And we have a whole floor for prostitutes and we have another floor just for human trafficking girls, which is a, a different thing. Amazing. The human traffic girls are really scarred. They're really scarred emotionally physically. A lot of them are from Eastern Europe that come to us yes. that they import over. A lot of them are from Asia, Korea. Mm -hmm. And of course, they come to us. Sometimes the police bring them to us. Mm -hmm. uh, they pick, get a whole group of girls that they find mm -hmm. caught in them and they bring them to us. Mm -hmm. We have the largest human trafficking facility in the world to take care of. For instance, until you get a facility, if you find a girl in that situation, if you'll just get them to us, we'll take care of them. And we don't charge a penny for anybody that lives That's at amazing. the Dream Center. Amazing. And it costs us uh, now $700,000 a month. And when we finish the floors up, they're finished this month. We'll have 1,200 living there. It'll take a million dollars a month that has to come in. So there is a price to be paid. And the biggest burden I carry is the financial burden. Yes. And we don't even know how we keep it open. I couldn't even tell you where it comes from. It is a miracle that equals feeding the loaves and the fishes. Amazing. And I'm sure that anybody that does something for God, let me tell you how it works. You don't get the money and do the ministry. You do the ministry, and, the money and God sends the money. Money follows It's not comfortable. Ministry. You have to walk by faith. It's not comfortable. <laughs> All the time. It is a faith yeah. walk. 
amazing, amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. so marvelous. And I mean, one of the things I really appreciate about the Dream Center in LA is that you don't just rescue people. Yes. You don't just get them freed from these yeah. evil men, but then you bring them through a program of restoration exactly. and discipleship training and give them a purpose. We really believe that it really isn't finished until we get them on a good track in life. And they start so, serving for purpose for which we were born. Exactly right. They can stay at least a year at our place. Yeah. We give them job training. We give them anger management. We help them get their GED, which is a high school diploma. We do everything that we need. We get them a job, everything that they need. Mm -hmm. We get them into a good church. If they live in our area, they come to our church. We have a church connected to the Dream Center that we have about 10,000 people that attended. Mm -hmm. And most of them are people that we've saved, got them on their feet mm -hmm. for the glory of God. Let me tell you one of our latest programs. In our country, one of the great need is for people that are in foster care system. You might have a different name for it, but it's kids that the parents cannot take care of them because of drug habits or whatever. The state takes it from them and they put them into other homes. Okay. And they give them funding to take care of those kids until they're 18 years of age. Most of those kids have been in over 30 different homes. They're shipped from home to home to home. Almost all of them have been raped. They have been sexually abused at one time or another in that home. When they're 18 years of age, the funding stops and they are aged out of that program. So what happens is the social worker shows up with a sack. They put all their clothes in that, all their possessions, and they're turned out on the street. The way we found out about them, 80% of those kids end up in skid row on the streets. No place to go. Hungry, living in missions, no place to go. 70% of the kids that are in prison were out of foster care homes. Only 3% of them ever graduate or go to college. 3% of that group. So we begin to find them. And so we are finishing up an entire unit, a three-story building on the Dream Center that'll take care of a hundred boys and girls. We find them now. Most of them don't even have their diploma. We get them their GDD. They all accept Christ as their personal savior, every one of them. They go to church and their lives are changed. And one of the great programs we have at the Dream Center is called Adopt-a-Block. Yes. And what we do is, every Saturday, 700 of our people show up. And we give about a 15 minutes little inspirational pep talk. And they are assigned to a block. Yes. About six of them to each block. And that's their block every week until they no longer at the Dream Center. So they build relationships and they knock on every door every week on Saturday. And they say, good morning, I'm your blockhead. <laughs> and they say, what can I do for you? How can I serve you? Yeah. Can I paint your house? Mm -hmm. Can I help you clean your yard? Can I mow your lawn? Can I take your mm -hmm. trash out and we'll haul it away? Mm -hmm. And they just serve them for three hours that block every single week. They build relationships. Well, our city used to be the dumpiest part of our, our area. Today, it's the cleanest. 12 years ago, we were one of the worst blighted areas in America. A recent survey shown that our area now is one of the most, 100 most living communities in America. And the mayor came and said, it's because of the Dream Center. Isn't that marvelous? And the mayor said, please don't ever get discouraged mm -hmm. because you are changing our city. And that's what can happen. Righteousness exalts the nation. nation, but sin is a reproach, reproach to any people. 
And the answer for this city, and I, 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 your city is so beautiful. I love your city. I love to walk the streets. My wife and I just walked them. And this morning I walked them and prayed for your city. Oh, thank you. And, uh, but the answer for it yeah. is a revival. And I believe it's going to start in the streets of our city. Amen. And I believe God's using this dream center to do great and mighty things. We are believing. Would you just agree in prayer before we conclude and just pray for those watching and that they'll have a heart to get involved. Let's do it. And pray for the city of Belfast and the Northern Northern Isle. Precious Lord, I just want to pray first of all for Dr. Stewart and his wonderful wife. It's very rare to find people that feel this way. But God, their heart is reaching out for these people. Remember the first time they came to a meeting, I spoke and wept, and they've reached out to my son and to me. And, oh, Lord, we're so far away, and we are glad to come and encourage people that I trust we've been able to do today. But, oh, God, the miracle is out there listening to this broadcast. These people need people that will rally with them, that will step forward and use their resources and their prayers and their energy for the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you'll speak to hearts today. Yes. And I pray your protection upon Dr. Stewart and his family, physically, financially, spiritually. Protect his mind from all negativity that comes when you are reaching out and discouragement can be there. And I just pray you'll build a hedge around him. And God, send an anointing on this ministry like it's never been experienced. Raise up people all over this community for the glory of God. And as we come back from time to time, kind of like the yes. Apostle Paul would go back and visit. Yes. Lord, mm. we believe for increase in every Amen. area Amen. for the glory of God. In yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pastor Tommy. Uh, again, we're so grateful and indebted to you for coming here to Belfast yes. and for encouraging people and for just saying you're standing with us and believing for a good future. And uh, to those viewing today, I would like to say, do get in touch with us. Uh, we do need to hear from you. We do need to have more volunteers. We do need to have more prayer backing. And uh, we will send you information about the vision for the Dream Center here. And we are working day and daily to reach hurting people, but we can't do it on our own. So we want to empower others and train others uh, far more numbers than we have at the moment to make a difference in Belfast. So thank you very much for being with us, and we look forward to hearing from you. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <music>